The Republican chair of the House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Devin Nunes, says he met with the source on White House grounds last week. That source shared classified information that revealed apparent surveillance on members of President Trump's transition team. Nunes shared that information with the president the next day. Late Monday, the ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Adam Schiff, called on Nunes to recuse himself from the group's investigation into Russian interference in the election. I think it would be worthwhile for the chairman to recuse himself from uh, any investigation involving either the Trump campaign or the Trump transition. Uh, he was a key member of the Trump uh, transition team, uh, and I think that presents an inherent conflict. Uh, so in the interest of enhancing the public credibility and investigation that we do, I think it would be in the best interest for the chairman to step aside, at least as far as this investigation is concerned. Tara Palmieri is in Washington. She's White House correspondent for Politico. Hi, Tara. Hi, thanks for having me, Elaine. Yeah, well, you heard Congressman Schiff there calling mm -hmm. for Nunes to recuse himself of the probe. Democrats have a limited reach in what they can actually do here. But how do you see this playing out? There's a lot of pressure on uh, Devin Nunes right now, not just from Schiff, who's been his, you know, his, co his partner in crime in a way. They've, they have worked together pretty well. Um, although he has raised some concerns about Nunez's closeness with the White House. Um, and also from, you know, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer. He's also mm -hmm. called on Nunez to uh, recuse himself from the investigation. He appears to be a little too close for comfort. Um, it's a known fact that he did not have to go to the White House to reach a facility where he could actually read um, documents that were classified. There are facilities in the Capitol and around Washington, D.C. And the question is, why did he have to be on the White House grounds? Who was he meeting with that may have been um, connected with the administration? Also, Sean Spicer today, uh, the White House press secretary, in the, in the briefing said that anything is possible when asked if it's possible that Nunes had spoken with a White House official hmm. when he received information about the fact that they were incidentally wired I guess, incidentally surveil, surveil, surveilled during the transition. It just seems that Nunes is doing a little bit of the administration's bidding, which would make sense for Democrats to say he's too close to actually conduct a fair investigation. Yeah, we'll continue to watch that. I also want to ask you about Jared Kushner. He voluntarily mm -hmm. agreed to be interviewed as part of the Senate Intelligence Committee's investigation into Russian activities mm -hmm. surrounding the 2016 election. Now, the White House is characterizing the offer as something normal. But mm -hmm. what does the fact that this is not under oath or public say to you? Well, it's still unclear if it will be under oath. Mm -hmm. um, it, it seems like it won't be public. But, you know, they're saying he's volunteering himself. He's offering to take, you know, to help out the investigation. But it's very clear that if he did not volunteer his testimony, that he would have likely been subpoenaed. Um, it's just not good. This is the closest person to the president, literally family, to have some sort of implication with the Russians. And any sort of closeness with the Russians is not a good thing. I mean, you have... Paul Manafort, former campaign chairman, and Roger Stone, his close advisor during the campaign, Carter Page, those people were a part of the campaign. They're in the past. But Kushner is a part of the actual administration, which is going to raise a lot of eyebrows. Look what happened when you saw what happened with Flynn. He ended up having to resign. And also the ambassador that he met with, the Russian ambassador, was currently under sanctions with the White House. And Kushner, who was connected by that ambassador to a Russian banker, was still the um, chief executive at the Kushner companies. And at the time, they were looking for bids to help with a project on uh, Fifth Avenue. It's just all a little a little um, too close. And it seems like the Russians are really do have too close of a relationship with some of the people in this White House. Yeah, we'll continue to uh, watch and see what comes out of these various investigations. Meantime, there is an agenda here for the president in this White House. After health care failed to move forward Friday, the president signaled tax reform would likely be next on his legislative agenda. Mm -hmm. Do you have a sense of what direction the White House is taking on that front? I mean, that, that could only, that's really the next thing on the legislative calendar unless they change something, um, unless Paul Ryan decides to introduce a bill in between then. Um, the, the next big win for, for Trump will be if uh, uh, Supreme Court nominee Gorsuch moves forward. So that's the only thing they can do. And I think that the White House seems from their rhetoric to be much more focused on tax reform. They have um, ec uh, economic uh, 
They have Gary Cohn working on it, Treasury Secretary mm -hmm. Steve Mnuchin. They seem to be really invested in it. They've already been in touch with Paul Ryan's office about this tax reform bill, and they, they seem to be very engaged, although he's yet to put a bill forward. Um, but I think that they've learned a lot from the past. They say they're going to work with Democrats. The question is, are Democrats going to want to work with this White House? And they're going to have to figure out how to deal with the House Freedom Caucus in the meantime if they want to do tax reforms and not just tax cuts, because there haven't been real tax reforms in the past 30 years. So I don't know how this fractured Republican Party is going to get together on around tax reform, which is even more difficult than health care. Right. And on that point, given the level of opposition the White House faced from the Freedom Caucus while mm -hmm. dealing with health care, let's go ahead and play for our viewers White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer's response Monday when asked if the president believes he can still work with them. Take a listen. Okay. It's not a question of we're going to work with anybody who, um, who wants to work with us on, ach on achieving the goals that the president set out. I don't think we're not putting anyone in saying we'll never work with you again. Um, it is that balance. Has he no, I don't think he's written. Happened? No, I, I think as, as he mentioned, he learned a lot through this process about loyalty. Um, and it's not just a block, it's certain individuals. And, and again, I'm not going to get into naming names, but I think the president learned a lot through this process. All right, so he hasn't written them off, the members of the House Freedom Caucus, but it seems that the president really just has two options here to continue to try to apply pressure on the caucus to get behind whatever his tax reform mm -hmm. plan will eventually be, or to completely move beyond them and look for a compromise with Democrats. How viable of a strategy might that latter one be? A lot of uh, sources that I've spoken to on the Hill think that the idea of courting Democrats is really just a way to put pressure on the House Freedom Caucus. Mm. The chances that Democrats are really going to get behind this White House are is, is very slim. And and the truth is that you know they might be able to get the Democrats behind infrastructure, maybe some aspects of tax reform. But when it comes to dealing with the debt ceiling and, and renewing the budget, I mean they're going to have to give a lot of concessions to get the Democrats behind them. And the truth is that Trump hasn't done themselves, haven't done, hasn't done any favors in terms of trying to get the Democrats on his side. He called Senate um, Minority Leader Chuck Schumer a clown, mm -hmm. and he constantly goes after Democrats on his Twitter account. He blamed them for the failure of the health bill, and then you know this today you heard from Sean Spicer that the president thought all along it was a bad deal. I mean they don't, they're probably thinking that they don't even know if they can trust him. And he's not that popular. I mean, if he was a really popular president and he had higher approval ratings, then maybe he could, you know, sort of twist some elbows and get Democrats behind him. But the, the truth is, is that he really, his popularity, his, his uh, poll numbers are so low. Why are they going to pay attention to him? Yeah. All right. A lot to watch. Tara Palmieri, <laughs> thanks so thanks. much.